Hi all, welcome back to Advent of Elixir. Today is day two, and for day two of Advent of Elixir, I'll be showing you some secret functions that Elixir and Erlang put into your modules. That's right, every time you make a module, Elixir and Erlang put in some secret functions that you didn't ask for, but which you probably want. Well, just how secret are they? They're so secret that if you try to tab complete an empty module, they don't show up. So let's do that. And you can see that if I hit the tab key here, nothing shows up. Um, but let's take a look at one of these. The first one I'm going to show you is called module info. And this is what it looks like. What it gives back is a keyword list of various metadata about the module itself. So the first entry here, module, tells you the name of the module. Exports is a list of exported functions. And in fact, you can see that the module info function itself lives inside of this exports list. Uh, a set of attributes, um, some compiler metadata here, and uh, an MD5 checksum of the module. So let's play around with this a little bit. And let's see if we can't um, see whether or not this exports key does actually correspond to the exported function. So in Alexa, we write an exported function by the def key. And then let's just make a silly function that does nothing much. And recompile. And then we're going to do advent dot. And then you can see I can tab complete to give you exported. That works. And then let's uh, check module info. And you can see now exported, the exported function does indeed show up in the, in the list of the advent module info function. What if we have a private one? And to make it private, we want to make it def p. And then we'll call it from exported to make sure that there are no shenanigans going on where the compiler might try to just elide that function and make it uh, interned. Okay, so we're going to recompile. And let's try running it. Indeed, you see that works. And then let's do module info. And you can see that the private function does not appear in the exported list. By the way, if you're curious as to what module info with one arrow does, what it does is it will simply uh, call the keyword list by its um, by its key. So, for example, if I type in module here, we're going to get the name back, and if I do exports, we're going to get the exports list, just as if you had uh, called it with the zero arity form and uh, done a lookup on the keyword list itself. All right, let's look at attributes. Attributes in Elixir, you create them by using the at form. And then we'll just do that. We're going to recompile. And that's fine. Well, let's just make sure it's used so that nothing sneaky is happening. And then let's make sure that, that works. Okay, good. And then now let's check uh, our module info. And what you notice is that some attribute doesn't exist in the attributes list. And that's a little bit unusual. Um, but what's important to know is in Elixir, when you create an attribute form, by default, it doesn't stick around. It only exists uh, at compile time and it's discarded. If you want to keep the attribute around and put it into the module binary, you have to use a special function called module.register attribute. You pass the module, give the name of the attribute, and then we need to do persist true. Let's recompile this. And now you can see that some attribute with the value of hello 
appears inside of our uh, our list of attributes for the module. Great. So one more thing that we should notice is that there's this other function called underscore underscore info. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to try and query the underscore underscore info. With the H keyword. So in IEX, that gives you the help for that function. And what's interesting, it says, is no documentation for the function module.info, which is not admin.info, is found. But there's a callback. So let's investigate what the callback is. So here it gives you actually a list of all the things that you can do with the module underscore underscore info. Let's uh, query the attributes. And then let's also maybe also do the um, do the do the macros, or sorry, uh, do the do the uh, MD5. So admin.info mac module that gives us what we expect, and then we're going to check attributes. That is exactly what we expect. But notice that there's uh, functions and macros, which are different. And so this is going to give you Elixir-specific information about the module. Remember, Erlang doesn't have macros. So this distinction between functions and macros is not uh, quite the same as it is with, with, uh, with, with Elixir. That doesn't exist in Erlang. And note, note also that there's a way that you can query struct, which is also completely different from uh, uh, from what you would get from, uh, from the module info. So let's go ahead and do this. So note that functions doesn't contain the underscore underscore info function. It also doesn't contain the module info function. Moreover, if I give it macro, and then we query the functions, we won't see that. And if we query macros, then we do see it. Notably, if we query module info, you'll see that the exports contain both the function use attribute, which we queried for, and also the macro hyphen sum macro function, which is the uh, function part of the macro, which is not the part that takes the ASD that it generates and compiles it. Now let's do one more thing. And what we're going to do is we are going to create a struct in our function. So the way we do that in Elixir is with def struct. And then we'll just give it one value uh, with the default. Um, and then we can maybe also give it a value that doesn't have Default. Let's recompile it. And then what we can do is we can do advent dot uh, underscore underscore info. And then we're going to do struct. And what this does is it gives you a it gives you a uh, a uh, structured data type that's a list of fields and requireds. Um, and that tells you metadata for what uh, the struct contains. So the take home for all of this is that underscore underscore info is basically module info, except module info is a generic function that exists for all uh, Beam modules that provides all sorts of metadata. And underscore underscore info is a convenience form that specifically helps you determine um, the types of metadata that you need while you're working in Elixir. And to really hit that home, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to, we're going to take a look at a very Erlang fun, uh, module called Gen. And we're going to call module info on that. And you can see this the Gen module info doesn't have an underscore underscore info uh, export uh, as part of its, as part of its uh, module functionality. And that's because this is an Erlang module. Okay, so I hope you learned something interesting about these secret functions, module info, 
and double underscore info that get created whenever you write a module in Elixir. Uh, with that, see you next time.